Here's the take from Jonathan Gollub at Credit Suisse. This is what he has to say. The best way to describe this environment is stagflation light. I'll get to that term in a moment. Three to four percent inflation with slow growth but abundant jobs. It looks nothing like the 70s but it's a challenge for equities. Jonathan Gollub, I'm pleased to say, joins us right now. So John, let's go there. Stagflation light. I see great growth right now. What do you see in the future? Well, if you, if you look at the consensus based on the Bloomberg survey of economists, um, we're looking at 60 basis points of GDP this year. And next year, it gets a little bit better, but not a, a lot. And there's two things that are dragging on the economy. The first one is if you're a business that wants to expand, you can't find workers. And that is, that's a headache. And the second one is that the Fed is tightening enough to really slow down the economy and take some air out of the tires, but not enough to throw us into recession. Now, John, last time that we, you and I talked, we, you know, we said, what, what would guys like me want to see more than anything else? You crash the economy, you have a real recession, you have a big V-shaped bounce, and it's a cycle that we know exactly how to think about. This is much more challenging. Well, talk to me about what that means for discretionary. That's the one a year today, a 13% year today on the S&P. How do you think about that, John, at the moment? Up 13%. Yeah. If we go to your world of 3 to 4% inflation, slow growth but abundant jobs, where does that leave discretionary? You know, it's actually my favorite sector for this type of environment. Just think about what the consumer is facing. Last year, wages went up 3 to 4%. But inflation, CPI averaged eight. So the average American went to the store, got a raise, and realized it didn't go as far as he wanted. This year, he's getting a raise of five to six percent. If you're a retiree, your cost of living adjustment on your Social Security or government pension is up eight percent. But inflation is expected to be under three percent at the end of the year. So the consumer is going to feel surprisingly empowered. Um, in this environment because wages are running hotter than inflation or they will be throughout the course of the year. The other thing is with jobs abundant, you have this really golden environment for consumers. It's one of the reasons why that both the um, University of Michigan and the Conference Board Consumer Confidence Surveys have been rising steadily since last June because last year was really a year where companies won over um, labor, and this year is one where labor wins out over over corporate profits and 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 companies. So there's a real shift in the um, in, in how things are playing through. Well, John, let's talk about the winners and the losers around that story. The airlines year today, American Airlines up 22 percent, United up 32 percent, Delta up by close to 15 percent, 14 percent higher. Do you see reasons for that to continue? Um, well, first of all, as, as I said, I think the consumer. Um, will increasingly have more discretionary income. Um, a lot of people are talking about the need for consumers to tap their credit cards and how much further can that go. But the real issue here is that wages are much stickier and staying at a higher level, and the general level of inflation is coming down. So what does someone do who has extra cash? They've already paid for their food. They've already paid for their health insurance and their rent. They get on a plane and they go someplace. A matter of fact, I think the group that looks the most... Um, that, that's the most empowered in this environment are seniors that have a pickup in the in their cost of living. And what are they likely to do? They're likely to go, um, you know, on a river cruise gambling, or they're likely to go, um, you know, on you know, um, you know, on something where you know something like a, you know, like I said, like a cruise um, where it's it's particularly well geared for them. And if you look at how the cruises have, the cruise lines have done this year, they've just been on fire. And I think that this is part of that theme. Labor pressures, we've talked about that, you've mentioned it. So Labor feels like they have the power, the markets might be compromised. Home Depot, Walmart early this week, Home Depot basically warning that there's going to be some Labor pressure that might hit margins. That was the take from a lot of analysts. John, are they the losers in your world? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you think about this the way an economist would describe it is you have a certain amount of economic growth in dollars. 
and certain years it goes to the owners of capital and certain years it goes to labor. For the last 25 years, the owners of capital companies have been the big winners um, and labor has, has stagnated more. The next year or two, it's going to be the opposite. And so, you know, this, this um, from a policy perspective, people have wanted the economy to rebalance so that the average American sees their, um, you know, their own situation moving ahead in the same direction as the stock market. And it hasn't happened that much in the last 25 years. But in this environment, that's exactly um, what's happening. Labor is coming out uh, ahead. And I haven't really heard policymakers talk about this as a, as a win, but I think it probably is. It would be a win if they talked about it, sure. but they don't really talk about it that much. I think that's the objective, the ultimate objective. So, John, we live in a world where the economy might look good and the market might look bad. Is that the takeaway? Yeah, I think it, I think it is, uh, John, is that the you know, corporations, first of all, in this environment where the consumer feels pretty good, you don't get a recession. So that's one of the, the real positives for the stock market since the beginning of, um, of October, is that the likelihood of a recession in the, in the picture I paint is much lower. And if you don't have a recession, it's, it's truly not bad for the stock market. On the other hand, corporate profits, um, the expectations for how they're going to do in 23 and 24 continue to fall. And it's not a revenue problem. It's not that people aren't spending. It's that corporations are getting squeezed on profit margins. And that's going to be the story. This, this earnings season, earnings are up over 5%. Margins are down 9%. That's directionally what I think the rest of the year is going to look like. Sales good, profits weak, and people are going to be really confused about that, but it's all about wages. So, John, right now on the S&P, 4,016, 40, 16, your year end is 40, 50. Given the right. risks we've talked about, given the weightings of the S&P 500, each company is going to experience these themes in different ways. A risk skew to the downside? You know, I mean, I, I think the overall market's probably going to be flattish. Um, and, and it's really interesting how well the call is is, is working out. And, you know, in the beginning of October, when we put out this 40-50 target, our expectation was the stock market would would move very rapidly higher as inflation settled down a little bit, as recession risks eased. Um, but that once we got into the beginning of this year or the middle of this year, that the upside was going to be capped, and I think that that's probably true. But there are winners, so, you know, talking about winners and losers. Um, defensive stocks, those that do the best when we go into recession, if you're not going into recession, you don't need to be in consumer staples or utility or, or healthcare. So I think that they're laggards, and they haven't done all that well, generally speaking. Consumer discretionary, even though the overall economy is sluggish, the consumer feels better. Those names do pretty well. And you were talking about the airlines. We we're talking about cruise lines. Um, those do fine. Tech companies uh, are really struggling. And that's kind of a, a somewhat different story. But I would love to be buying tech right now. But the earnings picture there is, is, um, is somewhat challenged, especially at the biggest tech companies. And so many people have been doing just that so far here today with big runs already. John, this was wonderful. Just to get a breakdown of your framework for thinking about this market. Jonathan Golub there.